Cool. Oh, sorry, Matt. Hey, everyone. It is Andrew here with Elevated Audio. This is our very first episode one uh, with Easy System Designs. I, I'm pretty excited about this project, um, and it is going to be a good episode. I have uh, Matt joining me today. He's the one who helped build out this system. Actually, he's the one who built the system out. So he's going to be joining here and explaining exactly why and what he was able to recommend for this uh, for Max's 2023 Ford Bronco Raptor. Um, so Max had a $16,000 budget for this build, and that's just for product. So we wanted to put together the best um, audio system we could to meet that budget and his expectations. So here in a moment, I'm going to bring Matt in here, and I'm going to uh, invite Max in here as well to join us. But again, um, just since this is the first episode, I want to go into the mission for the show. Uh, to give you some background, I decided to launch this project in hopes that I could um, round up the best technicians and sales professionals within the industry to provide uh, expert opinions and advice to all you out there who are looking for car audio upgrades um, or accessories such as drive cams, radar systems, laser defense, audio. Obviously, that's what Elevated Audio has been all about for all these years. Uh, but be able to do that in a non-biased way without an agenda. Um, we want to really listen to your needs and your budget and try to pair those two together as best as possible. Um, we really have no manufacturers to make happy. We don't get paid based on what we sell. We're not selling anything. We have no inventory to move through, anything like that. So these are purely non-biased opinions just based on our experience in the field and being able to kind of take all of our years of experience so and uh, put them together and build these systems for you. Uh, I'm checking time now, so <laughs> uh, I like to talk. Anyways, um, yeah, so if you are in the market for audio equipment, please check us out. Um, the link is going to be in the video description once this is all done. At any point, if you want to, you're more than welcome to jump in um, I, I'm putting the, um, I'm going to respond in the comments to where you could actually see all the products that we're, we're recommending for this build and you can click on them later as well. So that's for you, Max. Um, but yeah, so again, we have Max here. I'm going to invite him in here. Um, and then we have Matthew who's going to be providing everything. So in terms of his recommendations, so being episode one, I might screw this up a little bit. But let's get into it. Hey, Max. Hey, how's it going, Andrew? Good. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you? Doing well. It's the first time I've actually seen you face to face. Yep. So let's get Matt in here as well. We'll get all three of us. Hey there, hey, Matt. Max. How's it going? Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Pretty good. Oh, yeah, doing well tonight. So. Um, yeah, just give everyone a little bit of background on Max and kind of what he's looking to build. Uh, so you have your new 2023 Ford Raptor Bronco, right? Or Ford Bronco Raptor? Yeah, so I have one on order. Should be here within the next 30 days and uh, pretty nice. eager to kind of start customizing it, doing some things to it. You know, yeah. Audio has always been a thing for me. Uh, a bit, I got bit by the bug, you know, when I was five, six years old and 35, I'm a bit to be 35 now and it hasn't stopped. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a non, it's a love hate relationship with, with car audio. It definitely is. Dangerous rabbit hole. It is, you know, you go down it and you know, there's no coming back out. <laughs> yeah. How long have you had to wait for that? Uh, <laughs> ordered it in March. I got kind of lucky. Yeah, I got kind of lucky and I ordered it in March and uh, they started building it. Uh, I think uh, the 22nd of November and it's down. Uh, it's pretty much on a on its way to the dealer now. So it's just a waiting game. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, congrats on the new vehicle once you get it. I'm sure yeah. you're Very excited. For, it at this point. <laughs> for sure. Um, so yeah, we wanted to um, kind of go over kind of your expectations and everything. 
Uh, I'm sure you've heard the Bang & Olufsen system that's in there from the factory. Um, either that or you just have super, super high expectations of what you want your audio to be. I've, I've heard that it's a little, it, it lacks a little bit. You know, I, I think uh, just from my research on forums, like the staging of, of the speakers is pretty good, but yeah, it's, it's not loud enough, you know, and that's just, you know, yeah. just things, some things that I've read online. Definitely. Um, and I know there's a lot of guys out there like, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of shops out there that are specializing in the new Broncos, trying to find these like plug and play solutions and just overall upgrades because they are, they're very, uh, they want them to be like the new Jeeps, right? Very modular, exactly. very accessorized, easily accessorized, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that thing comes with a 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen system. You have the OEM sub. Um, it's all going to be factory when we get this or not when we get this, when you get this. Right. Um, and again, just so everyone knows, we have no horse in this race. We're not going to be providing install services. We're not going to be doing anything like that. It's purely a recommendation on what we would do if Max were to show up in our shops, either mine or Matt's, and we we had to put this in ourselves. Max, you're going to be doing this installation yourself, right? Yeah, for the most part, I'll be doing the labor tuning. Uh, there is a shop called Audio Systems in uh -huh. uh, Riverside, California. I think it's about an hour and a half from where I'm at. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to let him handle the tuning. Definitely nice. has a lot more experience in that in that area than myself. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, the, the name of the shop is Audio Systems. Okay. Um, I think, uh, I, I don't know the, the, the guy's <laughs> name, but I... Yeah. I know that he's like a state champion here in California for SQ. Oh, awesome. So, nice. Yeah, I, you I probably that. know him. You know, everybody. I feel like everybody kind of knows each other uh, in the audio world. We definitely do. Yeah, <laughs> been around the block a few times, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, you were looking for more clarity. Pretty much everything. Uh, right. Image. You know, I think. I think the fact that it is modular is a big thing for me. Um, yeah. You know, once you take the top off and the doors off and you start, you start driving, you know, I don't want, I think I'm at, I'm at the point in my life where I don't want something that's ridiculously, you know, loud when it comes to bass. I've, yeah. I've been so heavily focused on, you know, S, SPL, you know, yeah. from, for a long time. And I think I want to kind of dabble into the world of SQL now, SQ, SQL. You know, I, I don't okay. think the bass bug is ever going to leave me though. So for those who don't know, SQ versus SPL, you want to explain that or? Me? Yeah. Well, Why SQ, uh, I've always understood it to be more sound quality. SPL yeah. is just more, you know, bass heavy, you know, you know, I, I think a good example of that might be uh, probably one of the more famous people in, in car audio, Steve Mead. He yeah. has those 418s and, uh, you know, he, I think he really made that a thing. He, he he really uh, made pop, uh, you know, cardio mainstream with his YouTube videos. And, oh yeah. You know, I was already into that. I was already into it way before, you know, seeing his videos. But I think that just kind of reignited, you know, whatever I had bug had bit me in. Yeah. It's uh, it's never like I said, it's never gonna leave. I'm 35 now. I uh, first heard, first heard some serious bass when I was like five, six years old, and just uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, it's indescribable what what it makes you feel, you know. It, yeah, when when you hear that perfect audio system, it, it's it's quite like it just changes everything, right? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I want to experience now. I'm ready for that. You know? Yeah. I've, you know, I was, I've I've heard PA stuff like PA speakers <laughs> and you know a lot of subwoofers and, and multiple amps, but I'm I'm ready to tone it down a little bit and and uh, you know get get a taste of this uh, sound quality world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had somebody listen to a Porsche I just finished up on here last night and he, he was a detailer down the road a little ways. And I was like, have you ever heard a properly tuned, properly stereo imaged system? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I listened to Thriller in there and just, I told him to close his eyes and you're going to hear Michael Jackson come in from stage right and go all the way across the dash. Um, and the, this, this Porsche, it was a 718 uh, Boxster and it, imaged beyond the the width of the car so it sounded like it came from outside the windows on both sides coming right. and going and it was just 
amazing. And he, he was like, holy shit. He was like, how much is this? Like a thousand bucks? I'm like, <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> I was like, no, no. Um, he's like, what can I get for a thousand? I was like, a consultation, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I feel you on that. Yeah. But what about you, Matt? Like, what, what's your uh, background? Just so everyone knows. Yeah, so um, I've been doing this about 21 years, uh, a little over, uh, various capacities. So obviously you start off basic technician with Circuit City way back in the day, um, moved on to uh, some more mainstream shops, um, uh, moved states, I originally from the Northwest, uh, from the Portland area, uh, moved to a few different contracts. Uh, so moved to Wyoming, uh, eventually came down to Colorado, um, met up with Andrew uh, at Elevated back in 2015. And then we had, you know, similar visions. Um, you know, we were able to take, uh, take what was a mobile shop. So we did things on location, able to take it to, uh, you know, a top 12 shop in the country um, as far as quality. And so we did a lot of great things, um, worked with a lot of great people along the way that came, came through the company and, and, you know, that's, I think what we really focus on, at least I do in my shop is um, integration, um, sound quality. Um, you know, I don't do uh, SPL builds uh, very much. You'll do a lot of base, base builds because base is fun, um, but it needs to sound proper. It needs to sound right. Um, and so almost, you know, every big build I do has, as a DSP, uh, it's pretty rare that we do one without it now. And then um, Andrew definitely does, um, Elevated does a more advanced tuning than me. I take a more production tune um, with a single mic and pink noise and we get it, you know, about 80, 90% there. If you, you want more than that, yeah, you go to the mic array, the pulse responses, things like that. Um, but that takes a lot of time. So. A lot of people don't don't need that much. You got to be pretty picky about your music to want to go that far. Um, but yeah, so right now I uh, you know own and operate a, a shop by myself. Um, I kind of like it that way. It allows me to uh, pick the projects, really you know spend a lot of time with my customers, and you know get things right instead of having to worry about you know payroll for thirty people or you know selling what I have on the shelf. I'm able to really customize it uh, per each. Uh, person's experience the best part is your employee of the month every month yeah i'm also uh, you know the worst employee every, every month too so <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a good month i'm the only person to blame yeah, but the boss is listening all right <laughs> uh, yeah so let's um you know let's jump in and kind of talk about uh talk about the build if we can yeah, yeah. Sure. no that's great um, so I will put you guys on here for the build. Hold on one second. I screwed it up. Oh no! <laughs> Already screwed it up. There we go. All right, all right. There we go. That's where we're supposed okay. to be. Here we go. We we'll got everything ready here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I get. So Max, so kind of like what we, um, you know, talked about very, very briefly um, is. The recommendations on here um, will have some similar things that, that you may know about. You have a seems like you have a very extensive knowledge of, of the product and how things should work um, in our industry. <clears throat> Honestly, much more than most. Um, so, you know, there's a there's more there's a few ways you can do things right. Um, so, you know, if, uh, you know, feel free to change out anything I recommend. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of ways we can get to the end result. Uh, different products, things like that. But this is just simply based off of uh, the criteria I had, um, uh, potentially the ease of access for other other people watching. Um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So I'm going to lay it out kind of in, in a signal path. Um, so we'll kind of start as how we get into the system, uh, gain access to um, keeping the factory stereo, but yet uh, get ourselves a nice clean signal to work with and then kind of build out from there. So the uh, the very first thing is how are we going to get a clean signal, right? Uh, we've got a factory radio that's sending a signal down to the Bang & Olufsen amplifier and 
it's uh, it's all kind of wonky coming out of the backside of that Bang & Olufsen amplifier. So you could use that, um, but since Pack Audio uh, makes a integration part for your vehicle, uh, that's what we're going to use. Um, I don't do if this is available uh, for somebody's vehicle. Uh, I don't do the install without them. Um, it just you know the hardest thing in our industry is to predict the outcome at the end, um, so that we uh, you know meet the customer's expectation and so that uh, we don't waste time because waste time is money and not good business to be uh, unprofitable. So. Um, anyways, the first step here is get a clean signal, which is with the PAC AP4 FD31. Um, now, I, I don't know if you've uh, heard of the PAC OEM integration series at all, but uh, this is uh, where we would start. And so what this is going to give us is a uh, flat preamp output. So it'll actually provide a toss link or analog RCA outputs. Um, depending on how you want to structure the inputs of the uh, of your system, uh, you can use one or the other. But uh, this is kind of where we start to get uh, play nice with the factory radio. Okay. So from I, I there, actually, I have heard of, of PAC, uh, familiar with them as well. Um, do you mind if I ask a, a question? Because I think there's a couple of different solutions. I, mm -hmm. I think there's PAC. Uh, I think Zen is, is starting to walk away from uh, this area, from my understanding. And, and then there's TV a new partner. player as well, right? Um, sorry. Uh, which is, uh, man, they, I think they're trying to make like an, an integratable amplifier as well with Morel. I, I think they're just just things I've read on, online. I, I, sure. Uh, I, I can't think I of have a third. Yeah, I haven't heard of a th third company jumping in yet, um, or at least any products that are out there, um, I definitely look into it because obviously interesting and we need it in our industry. What was that third um, company next? I'm, I'm trying to think of it. And uh, was it like the um, iDatalink? Like the- um, No, it, it's, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not Maestro. It's, uh, they're trying to make an, like an integratable amplifier as well. Oh, cool. I had a link for it as well, but they, they're going to merge with Morel and make an amplifier, I think. Uh, I, I just can't think of a name. But, it, you know, it's but like comparing the pack unit to maybe like the Zen Audio. Is there any difference in, in quality or anything like that that you guys have noticed from, from your experience right. in working with the two? Sure. So generally... No, and maybe if you had the option to have them side by side, um, you you might be able to hear something. Um, typically, now typically the Zen modules from from Nav TV are uh, are nice, but uh, they're more expensive, and so just buying something for the sake that it's more expensive really doesn't make sense, right? Um, so. Definitely. <laughs> you know, so for from my experience, you know, if if they both make a part, um, and there's no, um, you know, there's nothing uh, recorded as far as like one having a lot of problems or not, and you know, we typically just go with with the least expensive part. In this case, the pack audio is less expensive than the the Nav TV, um, but we're still using Nav TV a lot as far as those those Zen integrations um, when uh, pack doesn't have it. So right. uh, there's a there's few right answers to go here, um, but the end result is, do we get a flat signal to work with? Um, and, you know, Pack Audio does that for us, so that's... You recommend the toss link over, you know, analog RCA? Sure, so it can depend um, on, the, on the part and what the, uh, the resolution limits are. Uh, so if we go a little bit further, we can ask, we can 100% use the toss link for this to build, um, you know, plug it into the, the pack audio part and uh, send it straight into uh, the DSP amplifier. Uh, however, in this build, I did put a secondary source. Um, the secondary source would be a high resolution uh, Bluetooth streaming device. So, I use this one a lot 
um, in my shop, but there's a few companies that make them out there. And this has a analog and it has Toslink output. The Toslink is a much higher resolution. Um, and so since the DSP amplifier I'm recommending only has one Toslink input, it was gonna be occupied by this part. Now, if you don't want that ability to, uh, to go around your factory audio system and have a direct stream to your, your amplifier, then yes, we would use the Toslink from the, uh, from the pack audio part instead. So if that makes sense. So how does this work in line with the pack unit? Sure, so this, uh, this would actually be a source number two. So okay. source one um, would be your factory radio that sends a signal to the pack audio uh, AP4 and then provides a uh, flat output to the DSP amplifier. Uh, a lot of people, especially in sound quality builds, don't want to run through the factory stereo because the factory stereo has resolution limits as well. So if you're trying to play, you know, from like a handheld deck, something like an Astle and Kearns, um, or you know, Sony makes a few super high end handheld decks, then you're going to be limited by the factory radio. So in this case, we get to go around that and run a direct stream to your uh, to the Bluetooth part uh, from the Beacon from Audison, and then run it straight into the DSP amplifier. Okay. So if we're like really trying to you know get the nitty gritty, the super fine details of the music, like you're listening to flat files, you know, um, 192k or something like that. So. Does that unit upscale huh. or do you have to have like, uh, you know, I think Tidal provides higher, higher res music, right? They provide higher res music. Um, yeah, as far as I know, the Pack Audio part doesn't, doesn't upscale at all or up, up mix or up convert anything. Um, and I don't know what the resolution capabilities are of uh, the Ford radio. So, um, you know, maybe somebody that, that's on here can chime in about that. Um, but I haven't, I don't have that information. So this is just kind of a popular way to go around it. Um, especially when we're talking about the, the level of equipment we're using. So, right. right. Yeah. But you don't have to do it. Some a lot of people. No, don't. no, they don't, I, they don't. I, I've <laughs> never, uh, you know, I, I've never heard of, heard of that, but it's something that's new and it's definitely something that interests me. Definitely. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of companies that make this. Um, you know, I work a lot with uh, with Audison, um, but there's the same part uh, from, uh, you know, Helix makes one, um, Moscone makes one. We were actually using Moscone first. Um, so, you know, lots of people make this, make this part. But yeah, if there's uh so that's kind of where, where we start. So those are going to be the, the potential source inputs um so you have the factory radio with the pack part you'll have a direct bluetooth stream um from the audison beacon um, or whichever company you prefer and then from there uh so the the toss link up here yeah so we're actually using the uh audio quest this guy uh forest series uh, so this toss link here, so the uh, AudioQuest Vodka, this would go from the uh, Audison Beacon, uh, so the Bluetooth streaming device, straight into the uh, toss link input to the uh, DSP amplifier. Um, and then we'd use the AudioQuest uh, Forest line of RCAs to go from uh, the pack audio AP4 to the input, analog input, of the DSP amplifier. So that's a, that's a lot of information kind of in a few sentences there. But um, so these are just simply the, the cables. Um, we use these quite a bit, but um, you know, you can, there's a, there's a lot of high quality RCAs out on the market. Um, we just like AudioQuest, they just have a good reputation. The sound quality is phenomenal with them, so. Are you familiar with AudioQuest wiring? Yeah, I've I've heard of it. I actually I actually looked into these not that long ago. I I uh 
I've used though I've used for the most part I kind I tend to use kind of maybe like Stinger, not like the I haven't used the eight thousand series, but I've used the four six, and I'll use like other just other brown other brands as well. But yeah, I've definitely looked into these as well. Sure. So these would be like equivalent to uh, like eight or nine thousand series of Stingers. Yeah, those those nine thousand series, <laughs> I I saw them for the first time and it, it looked fancy too. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've been kind of itching to use some some higher grade uh, cabling as well. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, obviously, it makes it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, they AudioQuest has uh, uh, lifetime warranties on them. Um, I believe they still do that. Andrew can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, they were definitely designed for home. So uh, be careful, no sharp bends, um, but you know, yeah, that's, of, that's one ends. put them in. Make sure you do not kink that wire because a lot of these have our silver wiring on the inside. Actually, I don't think the evergreen are. I think it's perfect surface um, copper. Still copper at that point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're fragile. I, 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 I consider AudioQuest to be like the Ferrari of um, wiring where they, they perform really well until they don't. <laughs> um so it, it, the, the lifetime warranty is great it is definitely a home audio designed um product and that's why we don't go higher than the evergreen i we we did golden gates in a lot of cars which is the silver and those um those break a lot um so this is the highest we recommend um or yeah got it the more expensive they go, the more, more fragile they become. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just keep it on time here. Um, let's jump sure. into so, the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of move on here. Um, so yeah. So in this particular build, I chose the uh, the VX eight hundred eight I. Now, this is a, a fairly popular amplifier across the country and across the world. I imagine um, uh, the software and its uh, very close to the top uh, of the of the industry. Uh, there's maybe only a couple who do it better. Um, and the way we're going to run this is uh, is we run it active. So we'd have uh, you know tweeter 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 one and two uh, mid three and four uh, kick speaker five and six uh, rears seven and eight and then the preamp output going to a different sub amplifier um, that we'll get to. Um, also, kind of keeping it in the uh, in line with a modern vehicle. So, you know, a lot of modern vehicles don't necessarily like to have you know hundreds of, of amps of current being drawn off of them consistently. So, picking something with a a very advanced Class D uh, chip is is going to be important. Um, also, space wise, um, with the the product and amps I've picked you are, it's going to be tight but you should be able to get them behind that rear panel in the right where the factory sub is um you know you can take class a or ab amplifiers and build out a whole rack and give up all your space but that's not typically what i specialize in and most people don't like that um i have to give up yeah. all their space everywhere right so um this is relatively uh, small and we can uh, get it on the amp plate behind the uh behind the paneling um and then yeah we'll have the drc here and this is going to give us the direct control over that amplifier um it's going to allow us to uh in a most rudimentary sense uh subwoofer control um as well as selecting multiple tunes um you know the way i kind of envision uh bronco raptor is when you go to tune it you have three tunes you have driver position kind of a, a still front stage you have a global uh, tune that's still front stage bias, and then you have a kind of let it rip. Um, everything's EQ'd, but nothing has timing. And so the rear speakers are, you know, once the top's off, everything's just kind of really, really going hammer time. If you're off on the trail, you know, just having a fun weekend where it doesn't need to be, you know, this precise musical setting. Right. So, so this is, uh, this will allow you to, uh, control the DSP amplifier up front. 
So do you have any any questions? I know we've kind of talked about other brands in this category, but well, yeah, any... it's interesting that you mentioned that or this particular amplifier because I was considering this one or you know the the, the eight thirty Pro from Moscone, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not a uh, you know loyal to any brand but this is definitely one of the other ones that I was looking at. And the reason that I was looking at it too was because of size. You know, interesting that you mentioned that because I know that it is a limitation behind that panel, um, at least from, from what I've read and seen. So this is definitely one of the ones that I, that I, you know, considered as well. The reason I, I think I, I liked the, the 830 over this one was just the, the amount of power that it puts out. Um, yep. and, I, and I know I mentioned that I have, you know, some idea of some speakers that I wanted to run because I, I have some that I think would be perfect for this. Um, mm -hmm. And and from my understanding, they're a little bit power hungry just because of the size of the coil on them. You know, it's, but this is definitely one of the, the amplifiers that I, that I took a look at uh, just because of the, you know, the size and the features that it, uh, that it provides. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's pretty hard to, you know, argue against this line of amp. Um, now the Moscone definitely has its place. Uh, it's a great amplifier as well, but yeah, taking into consideration the size of the Moscone, um, you, you might run into, uh, fitment issues for sure. So, right. um, and given the, the, the speakers that, uh, I know you already have, uh, the Moscone would make sense. But once we get into the speakers, it'll make more sense on why I chose this particular amplifier too. Okay. Um, so um, also just throw this out there. So the Moscone work, work great. The VXI work great here. Um, the Odyssey Forza um, amplifier, eight channels, those work great. The Helix, you know, there's a lot of great options in this category. Um, so, you, you know, there's not not really a wrong answer so long as you stick with you know one of those those main companies that really focus on this right um, uh, so kind of moving along here unless we have more questions about that no no for me so uh just like you mentioned earlier um yep we're on the same page with this so um we know that you have uh three or four um 13 tw5s from jail audio yeah. Um, and you're going to use three of them. Uh, right. and so the ohm load becomes an issue, right? So if you're, uh, yeah. So if you're just, you know, parallel and everything down, um, you're going to wind up with a 1.333 so on ohm load. Um, well, the Joe audio HD amp is, you know, specifically designed for that type of stuff, right? <laughs> so between, um, so, you know, we will probably wind up just ever so slightly higher than that ohm load, but, you know, this is typically what I would use for that, uh, that setup. Um, also, it's relatively small size. So, you know, I, I believe you'll be able to fit it uh, behind the paneling as well. Right. Yeah, size is definitely a, an issue. And yeah, this is, this is probably the one that I took a look at first, just because of, you know, the impedance that I'd be, uh, issue that I'd be running into. So it was between mm -hmm. this one and like, like, like I mentioned earlier, like a Rockford Fosgate, um, BDCP, maybe like the 1500 or, you know, maybe step up to the bigger one and just kind of, you know, uh, adjust my gain accordingly. So I don't send the coil through the dust cap. <laughs> <laughs> Give sure. everyone some, an idea. Uh, we did like a pre-show call with Max and he was like, I'm thinking about the 1200 one. <laughs> and it's funny because, uh, yeah, it's it's what Matt already kind of pieced together. So as you're reeling off, like your kind of ideal build, uh, didn't want to give it all away, but it's like, oh man, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to try to keep that a secret. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sleepless there... nights, just trying to figure out, you know, compact amplifiers that would fit in there that would put out a, a good amount of power. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the that's the tricky part is picking something that is. Uh, very efficient, um, compact size, uh, but still has the power and sound quality requirements. Um, and you know, it's, it's pretty easy to go, go find a 1500, 2000 watt amp. That's, you know, crazy right. big, uh, that those are, you know, a dime a dozen, but to find one that you can hide and, you know, it's not going to, go into thermal protection nonstop, um, you know, can be a little tricky. And this one, 
is definitely uh you know right where one you should consider if uh right if you're gonna do the build so so sweet so we'll kind of move on here unless you had any questions about that seems like you already know that one no no um, yeah, I, I'm, there it is yeah Yep. So in this case, I uh, I did put the I put a few MTI parts on here. Um, you know, they do a great job with with uh, building uh, parts for installers in general, so we don't have to build them um, or the uh, DIY community, right? So I mean, I've definitely ordered uh, parts from them to make my life easier if we're on like heavy time constrictions constraints, so that I don't have to spend half my day in the wood shop. Um, and so, yeah, this would be the uh, the plate for your, your Bronco that uh, you'd order. And uh, it's like I said, it's going to be tight with multiple amps, and, but should be able to get it on there. Get them on there. So Yeah, that, that's the one I was looking at as well. Oh, it's good. Definitely a good choice. Um, and in this particular case, I chose to uh, to do the wiring, zero gauge, rock for Fosgate kit, oxygen-free uh, copper. Um, it does have a distro block and so it's made for multiple amps um now you mean, there, you mean CCA won't it. work for this <laughs> you can if you want problems <laughs> uh we don't use that use that junk in my shop but uh you know <laughs> yeah i know um but there are honestly a lot of manufacturers that make really solid um dual amp kits so you know, you can kind of use your own discretion if there's one you tend to like more than others. But uh, this is this is one that's very uh, easily accessible. And you could you could just toss those RCAs in the trash, yeah. or use them for something yeah, else. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as, as long as it's uh, tinned uh, oxygen-free copper, I, I I'm not you know loyal to one specific brand as long as it's tinned. Yeah, and then hey, if you could uh, explain why you you like the tend aspect of OFC, because that's kind of a newer thing. Uh, just corrosion to prevent it. You know, I, I've I've used you know oxygen free copper before, and it you get that green color sometimes once it's out in the elements for a long period of time. So you know, with when it's tend, you tend to avoid that or you know minimize that that effect. So yeah. Um, I've kind of been trying to stick to tin, you know, when I can, if, if it's in my budget. Nice. Good choice. Um, cool. So we'll kind of move on. So uh, next we have the speaker selection. So uh, I know that you have a uh, Morels already. Um, and that would make sense why you want that extra power. Um, I have Morel Elates as well. And yeah, the more power you can send to them, the better they end up sounding. Um, this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. It is definitely, they can get plenty loud. Um, Focal does an excellent job at, one, this line, of course, is for sound quality, um, but they do an excellent job of making efficient speakers. So just to give you an idea, um, from the Morel Elite uh, six and a half driver, to the Focal six and a half driver. Um, these are the Focals are about six decibels more efficient. So we need less power basically is, is what that winds up being. Um, right. So that's where the VXI works out well is because we're kind of top out, you know, around that's 75. Efficiency. Yeah. So like these tweeters, I think they uh, have a 25 or 30 watt RMS. Um, the mids um, are leave somewhere 50 to 70 watt rms and then the uh the mid base uh, require 100. so you know it's right in the alley right down the alley that vxi and what it can actually put out right yeah you know that i i took a look at these and it i, I don't know I, I don't have any experience i've heard the utopia M's before the mids not the tweeter mm -hmm. i don't think it was the tweeters i think i heard the eight inch mid and it sounded really good. And, you know, I was talking to, to a buddy of mine and I'm like, you know, what do you think about these? Which is the person that had them in his car. And he's like, yeah, I really like them. Um, he goes, but you should consider the the new ones, the, the K2 Power M's. And I was like, why? He mm -hmm. goes, well, it's kind of like that sweet spot where, and, and I don't know, I don't have, again, I don't have, I have zero experience with them, but he's like, it's kind of like the sweet spot between, um, 
SQL and SQ with those K2 Power M's. He goes, they can they get they can get a little bit louder and and sound good too. But he goes, obviously the Utopias are going to sound better, but it, they give you the the best of both worlds. And you know, if you have you know any experience with the two, what what did you notice being the, the difference between them? Sure. So, well, what I will tell you first off is, I actually rarely do Focal speakers. Um, I do uh, Morel if I'm going high end. So like Morel, Late Carbon Pros. Um, this just gets into a whole another category that honestly a lot of the other companies don't don't reach that far. Um, so you can get the Morel Supremos, but it's it's in a two way. Um, so I know that these are loud is a little subjective first off. So, you know, your version of loud might be a little bit different. I think they, they get plenty loud and they sound absolutely phenomenal, uh, in the right setup with the right tune and everything like that. Um, but so do, you know, your, your speakers that you have, the elates are, are fantastic speakers as well. So we're kind of really splitting hairs and that's what tends to happen when you know you get into this level of build is i mean you're really reaching for that last few percent so um right. in my opinion yeah, and I mentioned you get to the K not... sorry yeah sorry my bad no worries um it when you generally speaking the the k lineup from pocal has not really been my cup of tea um that doesn't mean they don't they don't sound great. Um, it just produces a little bit different sound than I personally like and like to have to deal with in the end when I'm tuning. Um, the mid bass is typically a little bit stronger, uh, depending on which morels you're you're comparing them to. But more importantly, the tweeters uh, are are a little bright for me. Um, I like the smoothness of the morels when we're talking about the price point that the K series falls into. You know, versus some other companies like, you know, Morel or, um, you know, the the um, the Hertz Audio Legends, Millie Legends, or something like that. Like, so that's why I tend to not do Focal that much, um, except when you're going really high end and you have the type of buzz it Let's do that. There, there's these are probably the the best on the market at the moment. So, and then it fit within the budget you were trying to hit. So, right. But yeah, so we can, if you don't have any questions about those, um, obviously the uh, MTI dash plates here, um, pre made, uh, fit a, a basically a one inch tweeter. Uh, they can modify them if you just let them know what speakers you're using. Yeah, I, I've actually. <laughs> Texted. I was. I was texting with. I, I don't know who it was, but I, I. You know. And he was saying that. Uh. They, they can modify it. Just let them know the dimensions of the speakers, and they can. You know. Possibly make it work. I also. I also saw that. Um. Stereo Steve just came out with some three D printed pods like that. Um. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they're a pretty good fit as well. So. Um. Yeah. It. It definitely takes a lot of the. You know. The workout for me. I, I didn't. I didn't want to have to do that. Yeah, oh, as much as, I, yeah. <laughs> as, as, yeah, much as it's great. a hobby for me and I like, you know, getting my hands dirty, uh, it's definitely going to save a lot of time. I think it, 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 they're definitely worth it. No, 100 percent. Yeah, these even for an experienced uh, shop with all the, the tools at their disposal, um, this is complicated. Um, you know, it takes takes a lot of training and, and time to develop these skills and and uh you know chris down there mti has has really streamlined this type of product so um yeah uh, a lot of sh professional shops order these types of parts because they don't want to waste time building them because yeah. um, they're, they're already so good so uh but yeah you know either either one will work you know stereo steve's you know can be modified to fit the speakers you're going to wind up going with great um i haven't personally seen any of the other equipment out of uh out of there but um, you know, if it's good, it's good, you know, you can go with it. So obviously we're matching these with the, uh, the three and a half inch, um, uh, mids. Um, so that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, once again, they're going to be active. So, 
Right. But just not just looking at the terminals, and this is not specific to this this speaker. Do mm -hmm. you prefer a crimp style um, a ter terminal, or do you prefer to solder a wire directly on that? I've heard that if you solder a wire directly on that terminal, it can get a little hot, and then you can if you overheat it, maybe the tensile leads might start to. Uh, you might have some issues with the tensile leads. I just just curious, you know, because I I, I do pay attention to to things like that, and I want to make sure that I'm doing things correctly when it, when it comes down to it. Yeah, absolutely. This is a little bit of a topic of debate in our industry. Um, so yeah. if you're confident with uh, with a soldering gun and you use quality solder, generally it's not an issue, and you can solder right to the terminal. Um, if you're, you know, a little uh, lazy or not detail oriented, yeah, you could definitely overheat it um, and it can cause issues. Um, or if you're using really poor uh, solder, it can cause issues down the road as well. So what I would generally say is if you're, you're skilled at soldering, um, solder them. If you're a little bit iffy about it, use a, use a space terminal on it just high quality you know from right. connect one and um you'd be hard pressed to hear the difference to be honest with you i just like soldering it uh more myself because i know it's not going anywhere it's yeah, for uh, sure it's never <laughs> going anywhere <laughs> yep so you can take that over you know go baja with your bronco and and yeah it's gonna be just fine so all right, so yeah, we'll move on to the, the six and a half kicks, kick speakers here. Uh, so yeah, so we do this, the six and a half down in the kick. Um, you know, obviously match the mid and the tweet. Uh, and then we will, and th these are extremely efficient for what they are. Like I said, we don't need you know, all the power in the world as to where, you know, the, the morels, you know, four inch voice coils and, and you send 400 watts to those things all day long and they just, you know, they love that. These are definitely far more efficient. Um, obviously, extremely elegant looking. They did a great design with these. So, um, and then we'll use the. Uh, Is it true that if you adapters. touch the cone on those, uh, you, you could cause some kind of contamination? So they give you white gloves to touch those. Those <laughs> uh, the brilliant. Uh, I phones. haven't heard that, but. Um, it's not every day, at least it's not every day I'm working with these. So that's true. Then I've screwed up some speakers, including the <laughs> ones that I have on display up front, because I touch those quite often. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll ask you guys who do these more regularly, because I mean, let's be honest here. Um, the usually these speakers are associated with with labor and all, everything else with you know thirty plus thousand dollar builds, and it's not every day you're at least not every day i'm doing thirty thousand plus dollar builds it does happen but it's a uh, pretty rare so yeah so we would pair these with the uh, the adapters uh, for the kick once again kind of uh these are from mti um if somebody else makes them so they're probably very similar um, but the main important the important thing is to get a flush you know mounting surface get the distance behind the speaker we need, you know, kind of clear everything. Do you guys like to use the, the fast rings? I mean, I, those look pretty close to the grill and I, I don't know if there's a need for them, but um, just just curious what, what your take on the fast rings are. Yeah, I, I tend to use them um, when I can. Uh, no, immortalize that. Yeah. Oh. Open or closed cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we typically do like close behind it if we can, um, at the very least. But uh, it kind of depends on obviously the when you're when you're putting just a, a very universal round speaker into a door, right? You're going to pull this usually this big huge pod off the door uh, with most speakers nowadays, and so you're going to rebuild, you know, a speaker plate whether you want to go grab one from Metro or you need to actually go in the shop and build it, you want to try to get it as close, you know, to the panel as possible without hitting. Um, so I don't necessarily agree with guys who uh, use fast rings. 
who just like mounted to the metal and then they you know they have six right. inches of gap between the door panel and the speaker like yeah you re you set it back too far it's going to be extremely directional as far as the sound so um yes special rings are a uh can help but yeah it doesn't change the underlying build if, if it's not done correctly so cool so these are the uh the k2s the ones i picked for the rear just to kind of match with the uh, vocal lineup um so coax six and a half um you know, these can get uh these can do sq these can get plenty loud if you need them to um but yeah as far as the matching the, the front so typically you know tuning wise how we tend to do tunes is um when it's just you it'll be a front stage um with rear effects basically so how that sounds how you can describe that is it sounds like a front stage um, but the rears, you shouldn't really be able to hear them. They help with volume to make it a little bit louder. Uh, they also help create, you know, bigger space, uh, the effect of a uh, bigger space in the vehicle. Um, and so depending on how you choose, you know, to have it tuned, uh, wherever your tuner likes to do it, um, you know, you may, most of the time, you may not ever, I'm going to say hear these in quotes because they'll be doing something but you're not going to directly hear them. Um, but if you do the tune that tune three that I like to do with, especially for off-road vehicles is when you got the top off, whatever, just kind of let it rip. Um, these will be excellent when you go to that tune and, uh, right. you know, just kind of, you know, go with full rear fill, mode where it's <laughs> right. So with rear fill, like when you're doing something more sound quality oriented, do you prefer, <laughs> you know, differential real rear fill uh, or, you know, just kind of cross them over at pretty, pretty high, you know, three, 400 watt, three, 400 Hertz. And, um, so you can't really hear, hear mid bass coming from them. That's yeah. Pretty, so yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to defer to Andrew on this one, cause him and I tune slightly differently, but I, I crossed them over about 200. Um, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I, and, I you know, yeah, and they're generally three to six decibels below the fronts is what they wind up being. Um, but Andrew probably sets them up slightly different. Yeah, so when I when I do rear speaker tunes, <laughs> and that's not what this is about, and I would love to make an episode about just the way I tune, uh, but I typically uh, do a band pass on the rears because any audio coming from the back of your head, you're going to have a lot of those highs filtered out anyway. So I like to take some of those out and then band pass them at around three to 400 Hertz. Um, and then put a nice delay in there to give you that spatial depth of sound reflecting off a rear surface in a room. Um, but yeah, that's all part of my tuning process. And I, there's no like one shot method. It's a bunch of trial and error with rears for me, no matter what I do. The first time I'm unhappy, even if I do like the same exact thing I did on the last vehicle, it's like, shit, this doesn't sound right. Because the cabin, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're working right. with, we rarely are we doing the same car twice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always a, a little bit, but I, those guidelines, like you were just talking about are what I typically try to stay in for that initial kind of just trying to fill it out. Um, but then some, I mean, that, that's why Matt recommended the DRC, um, the DRC 205 um, to have multiple tunes in there because sometimes like if you're listening to EDM or something like that and you just want it to be on blast and just have that like not so much imaged but just spatial immersion it's good to have those things playing full range obviously right. if you have somebody in the back seat they don't want to just hear this band past um, <laughs> right. kind of music <laughs> so yeah that's my 10 cents on the uh, tuning there but all right. Now that's a good question, though. All right. And then the rear. All right. So, yeah. Spots, right? Yep. So, rear speaker spots. Uh, once again, MTI produces these, but if there's somebody else, makes them too. Um, I've you know, seen these in person. Um, so, I know they, that they work. So, allow the six and a half to fit just fine back there. And I, I confirmed with them that the K2s do fit in those. 
because they don't offer that as a solution when you're when you're configuring your your rear pods. But I asked if yeah. they do fit in there. If anybody else is you know wondering, they did confirm that they do fit in there. Nice. Yeah, and they're pretty good too about it because they, you know, they build a lot of this stuff on demand. So if you if you just let them know, like like you said ahead of time, what you plan on using, they can change it. And they don't typically just have like rows of these sitting on the shelf, um, pre made. They they make them on demand, from what I understand. Yeah, so we'll kind of move on to the uh, the speaker wire here. Um, obviously, we'll be running you know active, so you have to. You know, run some few new lines um, up there, uh, and so yeah, we're using tin oxygen-free copper. That's going to be great for the corrosion issues. Um, you know, fourteen gauge be plenty to handle anything now or in the future. I will say Matt disagreed with the fourteen gauge, and I will agree that it might be a little overkill. But I was trying to find a product link that uh, had the <laughs> OFC tinned wire. So, uh, but yeah. Sorry, that's my yeah, name. yeah. Matt yeah. recommended uh, sixteen it, gauge. Yeah, I, sixteen gauge would be plenty, um, to be honest. But you're not going to hurt anything by going bigger. It's just going to be more of a pain in the butt when you're trying to run those wires everywhere. Right. So you, you you may not like your life in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, the auction free, that. yeah, it's in. So exactly, I mean, you're on board with that, anyways. So you know, no no problem there. Um, and so yeah, we'll kind of show everyone the um, unless you have any wiring questions I can address. No, you know, I, you're right though. It, the thicker you know, the, the, the thicker the gauge you use for for speaker wire, that the more of an issue it becomes when you're trying to route things. You know, I say that right. because I'm in the I'm doing a system in my daily driver right now, and I'm using a 12 gauge for the mids, mm -hmm. <laughs> 12 and, oh, 16 and, and 16 for the tweeters and Are you trying man, to run that through the doors so yeah so what i ended up doing was i ended up drilling out i i deep right i deep i deep end and repinned some of the oh nice and <laughs> it was it was hard i think that'll be the last time. plugs yeah it'll it'll be the, probably the last time i do that but i just didn't yeah. want to drill from you know through the door it was just yeah, I'm I'm gonna yeah. stick with with thinner gauge wire from now on. <laughs> yeah, nice thing about Paco though is you don't have the doors, right? So, yeah, right, right. So it should be fairly easier to run all new wire, even if you overkilled the uh, gauge and did like 14 or even 12 for these kick panels, because I mean, yeah, because you're not running it through Molex plugs. I hate Molex plugs, and I hate running new speaker wire in any car that I ever do. So try to avoid it honestly but hey you really start to think about that stuff when when you're the one that's got to put it in so um yeah but use whatever uh gauge thicker than 16 you'd like if you're uh, feeling froggy and really want to deal with it um so yeah so we'll move on to the uh the subwoofers here so you obviously have these already but um it is an excellent option for that vehicle especially if you want to uh, buy something that's custom but off the shelf um, as far as the enclosure um, and these will provide you know these will provide m more base than most people would ever need but they should have no problem um, getting down and then absolutely shaking the vehicle and tingling your nose <laughs> <laughs> i bought them at the perfect time too right before um you know, kind of before all the price increases with with COVID and you know supply chain issues, so I didn't I didn't pay for them as much as they are now, and I'm I'm kind of glad that I bought them ahead of time. I had originally bought them for another car, and it ended up working out perfectly. Yeah, I mean that's that's good that you did that because that is a uh, a daily discussion now with uh, customers who come in looking for estimates, and they're like, oh, I got an estimate four years ago, and it was this. Well, that was four years ago, and everything's 30, 40% more as far as the product. So, uh, yeah, definitely deal with that a lot now. Um, but, yeah, just for any any viewers, so the 13-inch the TW5 um, from JL Audio is a shallow, high-performance, high-output, thin subwoofer. Um, you know, excellent sound quality for what it is. And excellent base output so it's uh this is these are widely used across our industry um you know so it's a it's definitely an excellent option for your vehicle and so we'll move on um kind of what we've uh 
touched on so far is uh, the enclosure. We've kind of alluded to what we might use for the enclosure, which is MTI's uh, big base downfire enclosure. If Andrew uh, skipped the uh, slide ahead here. <laughs> Did I miss something? Yeah, you move the next slide. Oh, cool. Sorry. I was, trying to, I was trying to explain to everyone on Instagram exactly what we're doing and stuff. So I muted you oh, okay. for a second. I was like, all right, we'll be good. And then, no, we yep. weren't. One time I mute the, the screen here. Yeah, no worries. So, yeah, so the, the MTI, uh, big base down fire. Um, you want a lot of base, something that looks custom that you can buy off the shelf. This is an excellent option. Um, this is a more, uh, uh, basic form. Um, you know, if you can obviously probably spend a few extra hundred dollars, get a little more, uh, uh, you know, flashy finish. I like the, I like the lights and I like, you know, I like the $20,000 downfire box they have on their website that I could never afford. But, um, you know, each, each person uh, has their own style requirements. So basic or flashy, whatever you like. And uh, I believe this comes in um, different configurations. So in this in this configuration, we're obviously using three subwoofers and a sealed enclosure. Um, you know, of course, there's endless debates on, you know, if two imported or, you know, so Yeah, I think on, with so those CW5s, <laughs> CW5s can only be in a, in a sealed enclosure, right? So... I'm kind of lucky on that, yeah. in that aspect. I like the sealed enclosures better. So if you want, I, I like the approach of um, if you need a louder, do sealed. But if you need a louder, add more subs. Um, it keeps the uh, the frequency response a little more linear, in my opinion. Um, but if you find yourself listening to one type of music only, you know, and you love that boost, you know, at that frequency, then, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's arguments, there's arguments both ways. It's really just personal preference. So. Yeah. I haven't um, used a sealed enclosure in a long time. And it, what, what I'm working on now, and I'm, I'm doing a sealed enclosure as well. And, uh, well, I have no choice with these TW5. So yeah, it's sealed it is. And you're right. You know, I, I, th I think the, the consensus is that they're a little bit more linear in their frequency response. So, yeah. Yeah. That's just, you know, like I said, that's just personal preference. I tend to do my builds that way with the uh, sealed enclosures. Um, it does tend to keep the box cost down too. So, you know, I would, uh, you know, do a bunch of math and everything, trying to figure out all the port lengths out and sizes and things like that. But, um, but then again, I don't do a ton of big base builds. So almost all my builds are are sound quality with about you know twenty or thirty percent extra base if you if you need it. So right. So personal preference on the subs, really. Um, but yeah. So all right, let's move on. So the speaker wire, um, twelve gauge. Um, we're gonna go from the the HD twelve hundred one over to the uh, the MTI box and. We probably um, probably double this up if we really wanted to, but I think that that's how I had it built. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, we have and I like to do the banana connectors in the yep, um, nice neat. You know, you know if you take it in and out at all, if you find yourself needing the room, and if you don't ever plan on removing the box. Well, okay, maybe not important. You can just do it. But if you uh, plan on pulling it in and out at all, these are really nice to have. They also look super clean. Um, yeah. If anyone. Yeah, I think you know what I'm look. <laughs> coincidentally, what I'm working on now is <laughs> I'm going to try to use. Uh, I have them right here, kind of handy. Uh, a little bit different. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try these out. Uh, Can't quite see point. what those are. Hold them up to the camera a little bit. I think they use these in like marine marine audio, uh, or so so their terminals. You kind of just mate them. You know, you have a male and a female part. Let's see, yeah, these are just the, uh, the females. They're, they're kind of interesting too. 
technically traditionally they don't have you know the bezel around them and you just kind of connect the two um but yeah i mean i'm going to try these out see how they end up working out it's a little bit different um than the than the banana plugs but i i I, I I tend to use the banana plugs as well, and that's what I've used. I think uh, the majority of the time that I've ever built something, just just for the sake of how easy they are to disconnect it, right? Personal preference. Um, different shops have different approaches to this. Um, you know, a lot of people like a lot of mine. I like to have a you know a two pin plug as a pigtail so it's like coming directly out of the box and things like that but um yeah real personal preference so you know be interesting to see how those those work out and if they work great awesome i really like that connector that you had there max i use them for jumper cables uh oh, yeah yeah i've used them for like in a, a so what i did is i have a battery charger an excess battery battery yeah. char, excess power battery charger I, I snipped the the wire and then i use those to just and I, I cut some jumper cables, and and that way I have a longer lead to charge yeah. batteries. Nice. And they, they, they secure the pretty good. One more time. Yeah, these are. Let me see if I have the. It took me a minute. So, it, so this <laughs> is pretty much the meat and potatoes here. So yeah. you can only you can only connect them one way too. So it's not like you can you can mess it up or. And they come mm. with uh, with some terminals as well. You know they're. How oh, nice. Yeah, they're copper. You know, tin terminals. I don't know where the other part is though. I, I bought them a while back ago. Nice. Like, Looks yeah, like those will work out real well. Yeah. I, trying some new stuff with, with my daily driver. Nice. <laughs> that that's a budget build right there for sure. <laughs> no, nothing like this one. <laughs> so a little bit of a um, pre warning here based on our like kind of pre show yeah, call. I, I yeah, saw you it. Saw it. You saw I it. saw it. <laughs> Um, I don't want to. I don't want to see that for a while. And you know, <laughs> and the reason I say it is, you know, I'm gonna hold this up. I've I've been doing that for a few for a whole week. You know, oh, yeah. I've been. I don't want to see yeah. sound deadeners. You know, dampening material for a while after that. <laughs> yeah, I have a Honda Element behind the behind the screen here, and I put in like 23 rolls of Sound Shield, and I hate. I absolutely How's your, how are your shoulders after that? You know, <laughs> you're, it's really my, uh, my mental, my mental, uh, sanity after just sitting in the car for that long. Um, and then just doing every panel metal back of the door panels, everything that you just showed. And the Honda element has a lot of real estate. Like it, there, there's a lot right. of body panels on this car, uh, but it made it very quiet relative to one without anything. So made it quite enjoyable, but we're still going to recommend it. And why is that, Matt? Sure. So just like Andrew said, you know, it, it's, and you said, Max, it's a, it's a pain in the butt. Um, I don't know any seasoned technician that loves to do sound editing, um, sound treatment, but you can't deny what it does. Um, and how it helps. So obviously it can, uh, you know, lower the resonant frequency or whatever it's attached to. So vibrations tend to go down. Um, you can also, by lowering the, the floor noise in the vehicle, um, it gives a perceived effect that your system is louder and clearer than it really is. So you can technically need less power to achieve relative the same levels of volume and, and clarity. Um, so, it's hard to argue with the benefits of it, um, but yes, it's uh, it's not exactly skilled work to put it in. It's just laborious to, to do it yeah. correctly. Yeah, very yeah. time consuming. So I, I absolutely <laughs> hate it. I hate doing it so much, but I still sell it to my customers and I still trudge my way through it because it's important. It, it has a big effect. So. I, I would recommend it. if you don't want to do it, we don't have to do it, but, um, it's, it's not uh, that it's, it's that if I, if I do the, the sound damp, the, you know, the mat, you know, whatever mm -hmm. brand it is, I'll, I have to do something on top of it, like a, you know, mass loaded vinyl or, you know, just, and then it's, it's just kind of, it's, it snowballs that, that alone kind of snowballs into, into something else. You know, it, 
so time consuming. And well, so the Dynamat obviously, you know, is, is just one layer. Um, and, and really what it's there for is, is lowering the resonant frequency of what it's attached to, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily create a fantastic uh, barrier for, right. for the sound. Just so, yeah. So usually, like I use Sound Shield um, mostly um, in my builds because it's, it's kind of a two-part system, right? So it adds, you know, layer of foam as well as exactly what Dynamite has. Right. But the, um, and then, yeah, if you really want to get crazy, uh, you know, mass loaded vinyl, I typically tend to do only on like four boards because it's yeah, yeah. hard to attach, right? It just likes to sit there. Um, but yeah, so take that for what it's worth as a, it, it's beneficial for most, most people as long as it doesn't really add too much weight. Um, you're going to be pretty, I just, I just did a lead. Uh, and I, I know it, it it has its cons working with it, but I have gloves on. I just I, I plugged all the holes on the door panel with a uh, mm-hmm. lead sheet just because it's so malleable, and I and I lined it with closed cell foam. I okay. I used some some uh, cement, some contact cement, and I'm it's the first time I've done it, so I'm curious to see you know how how beneficial that all that extra work was. Yeah, the door it's, is definitely it's always... heavy. You you shut the door now, and you know like I said, I'm working my way through that. You know, I did that all this week, and uh, you can definitely tell that there's a lot of added mass to the door. I mean, I put a couple layers on the on the inner door skin of you know, damplifier or, or you know any kind of damping material, and some mm-hmm. some acoustic foam in there, and I hope it pays it, it pays dividends. You know. That's it why I kinda, when I talked to you guys when I talked to you guys <laughs> earlier, I was like, I'm up to here with with sound treating right now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to see it for a while, but. I, I I know that you know you're right. It does it does have you know it, its benefits to to doing it. Yeah, it's kind of a fine line, right? With um, uh, with the weight. Um, so one thing that uh, our viewers should know about uh, sound material is one don't don't create any issues for yourself if you put it on. Like don't cover up factory bolts. Don't like if your window motor goes out and that technician has to go take off what you already did he's gonna be super upset about it um and also with japanese vehicles specifically we've run into instances uh you know like subarus and things like that that it can affect how the door opens and closes over a long enough time timeline so you know you want to be careful just absolutely going nuts um you know, like sound shield on the inner, the outer and the door panel. And all of a sudden you, you know, you've added, you know, 40 pounds to that door. Well, that hinge is going to be really upset. So that's kind of something to consider as well. Uh, yeah. And also, you know, 50% coverage most of the time yields by 80 plus results. So you don't have to cover every single inch. Um, and especially when you're working with uh, vehicles that have, um, lighter duty hinges that's something needs to be considered definitely yeah i used a lot of uh and i you know it's good that you mentioned not to cover up any access panels a lot of threaded you know uh, a lot of you know threaded inserts some nut certs and that way everything's completely removable in case that needs to be you know accessed i don't want to that's the tedious part right that's the yeah. part that really uh anyone just slap a panel on the door and call it good right um so well, I mean that that's kind of all of the all of our recommendations. And as we were talking on the phone earlier, it sounded like you already had a very, very similar system in mind. Um, yeah, but again, I was open to, to suggestions, you know, from from experts just because yeah. I don't have first hand experience with a lot of the products that I that I mentioned. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate you being the first and having such an ambitious build. Uh, to kind of set the bar high for everyone else. Um, but as a reminder to everyone watching, and it looks like we have a few viewers, um, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. But if you're looking to have a system built as well, we do everything from just entry-level stereo to like what we did for Max here for this $16,000 kind of part build out. And Max, just so you know, there is a link in the comment section on this live stream 
um, where we kind of placed all the all the products out there for you uh, regarding the AP4 FD31 and the uh, Audison piece at Beacon, everything else. But okay, yeah, that's what I was going to see if, if if you guys were, you know, I was going to ask if maybe you guys could email it yeah. or work. I, I could text that over to you too, so you have that. Okay. Um, but a lot of this stuff you, you already knew, right? Like you, so. I did it. I, no, I, I did it. Like the, the, you know, the high res Bluetooth module I had, I think I had seen the Moscone one that was mentioned, but I, I didn't, I didn't never consider doing something like that. Yeah. Well, we're like so, an hour and a half in here almost. Um, <laughs> how'd you feel this went Max? Like, well, what, what's your good, you know, I can, I can talk audio for, uh, for a very long time. You know, yeah. And, so I appreciate your guys' time and suggestions and, the, you know, the effort that you guys went through to to put that together for me. Well, thanks. Yeah, Matt, Matt's the one who actually put through, put all the effort in actually making everything. Yeah, it is it, it a lot of fun to piece it together. Um, it, it's pretty rare, to be honest, that um, somebody has the type of build that you want to do and and wants to do it themselves. Um, yeah. That's that's extremely rare actually yeah. <laughs> so you know it's awesome that you're you're able to do it yourself and then want to take on that type of project well a lot of the parts are usually like you mentioned you know mti supplies a lot of the, the hard stuff to make you know, I, don't, I don't have to worry about making an amp rack or you know any kind of panels or anything like that i don't have to bust out the 3m bono pan uh, panel bonder and <laughs> make some <laughs> some some speaker pods for the dash so we uh, try to avoid again. i appreciate it and and I, I don't think you guys saw it, but on uh, on Facebook Live, we had Phil Cantu over at MTI um, say, loving all the MTI goodies, y'all. <laughs> yeah. And I, I recommend them all. The, even though I've, I don't have any experience, you know, on, on the forum, Bronco forums and stuff. Yeah. People always want to change stuff out. I'm like, look, they already make this stuff. Just yeah. don't, don't go through the hassle of trying to, you know, buy you know, lower quality stuff or, you know, trying to make it yourself when somebody already offers it. So yeah, he, 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 he there's, there's riches and in, in niches. And I think he, he definitely, they capitalized on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say hi to Phil. If he's still on here, I know he said hi in the comments here. So yeah. No, Phil. Are, are you on Instagram, Matt? Just, I follow Andrew and I'm, and I'm always on his lives. You know, I, I always try to learn something while he's working. So, I mean, if you, if you're on there too, I, I yeah, I'm follow. at, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm at Car Audio Revolution. Okay. Yep. yep. Oh, Phil is on there still. Phil is on there. Phil is a yeah. fantastic guy and a uh, a fabricator. <laughs> yeah, he he was the fab guy here at Elevated Audio for a long time. So then he had to move back to Texas. So thanks a lot, Phil. He didn't like no. the snow too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> But no, he's in good hands down there uh, with the guys down there at MTI. But yeah, yeah we try to keep these unbiased, um, even though Matt's wearing a Sony shirt right now. Um, we try to keep it unbiased and just try to, like the whole premise of the show is not to recommend stuff that we have in stock or that we get the most benefit from if we sell the highest margin product. It's really designed to be whatever's best that we, that we believe is for your car. Now, we might not be right. A lot of the times, but we have some experience. I have 20 years in the industry. I think Matt has a year or two more than I do. Um, and it's kind of what we built our life around. So it's it's a very niche thing, but I think there's a lot of bad information out there, like kind of what you're saying in the forums and stuff like that. It's everyone has an opinion and we're just trying to provide an unbiased opinion and not steer you in any specific direction. So if you don't like this build submit another inquiry and just say not like episode one and uh we'll have matt redo the whole thing for you with all new products, yeah so. and just be like all the recommendations suck from matt for just do it again yeah completely completely fine <laughs> yeah um because it'll give us content you you just have to spend another hour with us so um yeah i don't know if you guys heard any of that i kicked the plug so yeah, no, no we got it all. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Um, well, yeah, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it, Max. Do you have any anything else 
No, you know, again, I appreciate your guys' time and, you know, th thank you for taking the, the time and effort to put this together and, you know, give me some, some guidance because I, I probably would have done something that I, I regretted later. Well, sure. why don't you get the car? You said about 30 days out or mid December uh, like that? Like, it's estimated delivery is like December 17th through the 30th. Nice. So, cool. Pretty exciting. That and then you're going to just start on the build immediately? Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy it for a little bit. I want to do yeah. like, you know, paint protection film on it. Nice. And um, you know, I'll probably do the audio stuff maybe like in the spring. You know, like yeah. just. Just because it's starting to get a little cold here, and um, I'm confined to like you know, a small garage to to do work. Yeah, that's a, that's the problem. Um, kind of not having your your vehicle exploded out in the garage for months, you know. So, do you, do you, did you give yourself a timeline for this build? Uh, um, in terms of duration of start to finish. Well, that's why I want to use all the MTI stuff because it's not gonna it's not gonna take a long time. I think. Uh, I think I, pro I can probably knock it out in a few weekends just because I work a day job. You know, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, maybe like three three weeks. Uh, and, I, and I have to kind of keep in mind that, you know, the vehicle is going to be used in, in between this. So, yeah. I, you know, whatever I start one day, I kind of have to finish. So if I start running wire one day, I have to finish that up. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, Matt, you got anything before we go? No, no, it's a, it's a pleasure doing the bill for you. Appreciate you uh, submitting the inquiry and, and, you know, it's been fun being on here. If there's any more uh, follow-up questions or anything like that, um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, not always the most responsive uh, if you message me through Instagram, but try to get to you. Um, or you can bug Andrew as well if, uh, if you have any more questions along the way or in the spring when it gets closer to the, to the build time. Yeah, I'll probably start hoarding equipment pretty soon and just kind of piling it up. Yeah, nice. Not a bad plan there. That way, you, yeah, for a while, JL audio amps were very, very hard to get. They were months out, so, yeah. Yeah, that's like the hardest brand for me to get my hands on. I, I've, I've made friends, you know, that you know, I have like, you know, shops and stuff like that around and they can, but that's like, I see, I feel like that's the hardest brand to get your hands on these days. Oh yeah, and I got lucky with those, you know, those TW fives. So, been saving them for a good time. <laughs> well, one, once you're all done with the build, we'd love to have you back on and just see kind of how it went. You know? Yeah, for sure. I'd I'd like to do that. You know, I I, I want to get it tuned by. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys know them. Uh, I I think everybody, like I said, everybody knows everybody uh, in the industry. And at, what was at least the name of the shop one more time. Audio system. Audio system. Yeah. See. Audio systems, and they're in LA. Or... They're in Riverside. Uh... All right. Yeah, I see them on here. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that too can probably tune it for me. Yeah. Well. No, yeah, it, it, it all comes down to the tune. You could put the best equipment in your car and it might not sound great um, without a proper tune. So, or you could just take factory speakers and you can make them sound totally different with the right <laughs> tune. So, uh, don't, don't tell me that because I'll, I'll go ahead and <laughs> I'll do that now. What, just retune the factory speakers? Yeah, I'll, I'll, save, I'll save a lot of money and just, just you, go that route. You would save quite a bit. And no, the nice thing I, about I, it is you could always replace speakers later. You're just paying for two tunes at that point. So, um, yeah, no, it, it's I, something that you have to do in stages. But it's time. You know, I, I, I have a, you know, I've been doing this as a hobby for a long time for friends and stuff like that. It's time yeah. that I treat myself. So, yeah, no, yeah. There's no better feeling than doing it all at once and just being done with it and just being like, this yeah. is what I wanted. This is what I got. So we'd love to figure out what you ended up with in terms of product, whether you went with the Moscone, whether or not you did that sound deadening, that might push you out another month though, if you do. <laughs> yeah. Because Matt, Matt put four bulk packs in that estimate. And I'll send that over to you too, so you can see that all the pricing right. break down. But we came in like $500 less than the actual, um, the, the $16,000 budget. So yeah. 
Well, but honestly, I, I, I do have one more thing to add. Sorry, Andrew, let me cut you off. Um, tuning wise, so although I did recommend the, the VX 808, um, I would recommend that you find out what program your tuner works with the most. Um, whether it's Moscone's, whether it's uh, Audison's, whether it's Helix, uh, because that's probably going to yield the best result rather than paying for him to, you know, figure it out. And, you know, if he doesn't ever work with JL's software, although a lot of them are similar um, now anyways, he might be more comfortable with, uh, you know, Helix or, you know, Audison's or something like that. But um, so for you, you know, go hard on, on picking the product. Yeah. Maybe see what, what he works best with since he's going to be your guy for the finishing touches. So, Yeah, yeah I know he, he he's done Helix for sure. He just did a Helix amplifier, or Helix amplifier or DSP in, in a friend of mine's car. He did a, so I, 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 you're right. I, I'll have to ask him just to see what if he has a preference in, in software. Sweet. That's all I got. Signing back to a comment here. Um, yeah, Ron says, yeah, I agree with Matt regarding the tuners. So thanks for that, Ron. All right, guys. Well, I feel like this has been a great first episode. Uh, if you have a system that you want to have us build, please fill out the inquiry um, on, on the on the Elevated Audio website, and we'll get you featured on here. Thank you again, Max, for taking some time out of your day, for submitting that and being open to our opinions. You know, that's all they are, their opinions. So, and there, there's a million different ways you can go with audio systems and products and everything else. And luckily your car has some space in it and it has depth and it has a bunch of stuff where you could really get creative with it. But um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to close this out before we, we run any longer. <laughs> so, thank you, thank Matt. You, appreciate it. Thank you, Matt, for taking the time and building the system for Max there. And um, we'll see everyone on the next show. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> See Thanks, ya. Max. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it again. All right, guys. That was episode one of our easy designs uh, process. So uh, that was a 2023 Ford Bronco Raptor. Uh, Max had his $16,000 uh, budget to kind of work in. We paired him up with Matthew Davies from Car Audio Revolution to build out that system for him as if he was his customer. Uh, once again, we don't have a horse in the race here. We're not trying to sell product that we have on the shelf. We're not trying to sell product that pays us the most or that we have loyalty to in terms of like reps or manufacturers or anything like that. We have no brand loyalty here. So we really just want to pick out the best product for your car based on your needs. Everyone's needs are slightly different. So we like to kind of adjust these quotes as needed. So if Max comes back with a whole nother car with different expectations, we're not gonna, we may not recommend the same thing. So I would like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Again, episode one, we wanna do this every day, actually. Every single day we're gonna do this. Probably not an hour and a half, but I'm sure not everybody is gonna have a $16,000 bill that they want to, um, do so shorter builds or smaller builds should take less time uh, but yeah once again thank you all for tuning in it means a lot to me and hopefully we could change i, I don't want to say change the industry um because i'd be pretty presumptuous but i just want to provide a better experience for people in the industry make sure that they get expert advice from qualified technicians. Everyone that I'm gonna feature on this show is gonna have 10 plus years of experience in car audio. So this is not gonna be the noob who just got hired last week trying to quote out your car um, and just sees dollar signs. Like, oh, I'm gonna sell uh, this VXI 808, even though I don't know what the fuck DSP is. Um, anyways, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I lost my train of thought at that moment right there when, uh, yeah. So anyways, thank you. Thank you for tuning in on Instagram, everyone that's here with us still. Um, and that is it. That is the show for the night. We will come back live Monday, probably not at prime time. We're going to probably go on around 10 a.m. Uh, and we have a couple cars to choose from, from our inquiries. So if you'd like us to build a system for you, please send in an inquiry request. 
on the Elevated Audio website. Cool. I'm done here. Everyone, have a great night. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Not starting soon. I hit the wrong button. See you guys. Let, let's see. Let's see. Um, sorry. Every day makes it difficult to catch. Yeah, right. Every day is going to make it awesome to catch. I think only because, hey, we're doing a show every day. Uh, you don't have to watch every single one of them. I will post on our Instagram the the vehicle list for the week. So you just tune in for the vehicle that you find most interesting and the budget that you find most interesting. Um, and yeah, that that's it. Thanks for watching, Ron. I greatly appreciate it. And now I'm going to do an exit here and see if I could do this the right way. See ya.